Oh, welcome back to Lydia. We're continuing left off of uh, uh, a dream sequence in which I was an older girl fucking everything up uh, with asshole friends, and uh, apparently I'm back in the bedroom, so I'm not sure what the hell happened, if that was real or fake or the future or a lie. So let's hope that was all just a nightmare and our parents aren't stupid and drunk and, you know, everything's destroyed. We'll go downstairs and everything's all right. I don't know if I should look for Teddy to help me, but well, let's let's just see where it goes. I, I guess and hope things are okay. This music is making me question a few things. Oh, flies. Ah, uh, what? Oh no, it's the evil adults who are being turned into demons through alcohol. It's a little fucking weird. Why do they have yellow gl or glowing orange eyes? Why is there just alcohol and beers and cups everywhere? And yeah, I know this is going to be probably from a perspective of weirdness and atmosphere from a child or... I mean, she looks like she'd be like three or four years old. Going through the midst of weird party of a lot of people drinking and being stupid drunk and oafish. I remember I hated being around family members who were- oh wait, why were we in this kind of area? Why is it like a bar? Is a guy even playing the piano? Who the hell are you? Unplug the thing. Or, or, where am I going? What is going on? What is this place? This isn't- a, this isn't a home. It's like a bar room. For a second I thought I saw people get like having sex. Uh, Instead, this guy's like, the guy in the black is ramming his head up the, this guy's ass. Repeatedly. I am unsure what's going on. Uh, hey. What are you doing here? I had no idea there were kids. Uh, Look, you don't have to worry. We're just having a wee bit of fun. Uh, Everything's under control here. Uh, you should go back to bed. Um... Afraid. I am, I'm afraid. Now don't be silly. We're having a good time. No need for worries. Now off to bed. Mm. Hey mister, I can't sleep because of the noise. Well, that's too bad. Have you tried hard enough? Go try a bit harder. I can't sleep because of the noise. Don't get cocky with me. It's not like this happens every night. You know, you start to piss me off. Well, fuck you too. Fuck this, I'm out of here. Good, get the fuck out. You too, you can get the fuck out. Good heavens, it's way past your bedtime. What makes you so fucking high and mighty? Why are you still up? Well, fuck you. I can't sleep because of the noise. There, there. It'll be alright soon, but it's very late. You should get back to your room. So one of these will keep chasing them away? Courteous. I tried to sleep, but I just can't. Hmm, maybe I should get going. I don't want to keep you awake. You take care of yourself, okay? Okay, this guy wasn't too bad. I don't know what the fuck that guy is doing right here. Like, what the fuck is he doing? I mean, maybe that's a way they've invented that'll help them take a shit better. Like, you're trying to uh, use the momentum of shaking your ass forward and back to shake the poop out of your asshole. Possible. Possible. Hey you, female. Psst. Hey you, come here. Uh, could you fetch me a drink? God damn it, I fucking skipped it again. Some. God damn it, I wish I knew what she said. Can I skip this? Damn. Um. I, I can't go to the kitchen. Wait a minute, you're a kid. Where are your parents? Courteous. I don't have any idea. This is so irresponsible. I'm gonna get out of here before someone calls the police. Fuck me and my heavy fucking finger. Seriously, it's like when driving. I always had to be told by my... I remember just like mostly from like when I was doing uh, driving training a long time ago and they were just like always warning me about having a heavy foot. And it's the same way with my hand. Everything just sort of weighs down. Wait, is there legs sticking out from underneath the table? Who's this person? Is this their mother? Or... 
We're just zooming up slowly for some other reason. I don't feel so good. Oh, they're vomiting in the sink. Are you alright? That last one was too much. I feel terrible. Uh, do you need help? Nah, this will pass, hopefully. Nope. Hand me a towel. Fuck. This happens every time! Time to put the cap on. Okie dokie. Uh, let's go to the door. Wait, that better not be leading to outside. I'm like a little kid who goes outside. I hope that's not the direction this is going. I wouldn't trust a little kid going outside. Wait! Teddy! You come to help me! I'm sorry for everything, but you've got to trust me on this. Please don't go outside. There's nothing but tears. Teddy, you didn't keep your promise. I know. And it breaks my heart. It really does. But you've got to trust me on this. I'm wondering if the Teddy is supposed to be a projection of her dad. What's outside? Look, the monster wasn't what I expected. But now I know what it is. Don't go out there. I don't want you to get hurt. Oh, Teddy. That already happened. I know, and I'm sorry, but I'm going to see the monster. Okay, but alone. Okay. Goodbye, Teddy. Come on, don't say it like that. Goodbye. Whenever people say goodbye, it's like it's like the the long lasting one. It's like in sort of like Japanese culture, you call me a weeb. But it's like when they say goodbye, there's two different versions. One is a goodbye and the other one's like a long or a forever goodbye sort of thing. And when you say goodbye, I never like saying goodbyes. Usually it has to be a quick one, like see you later or bye for now. I don't like goodbye. It just sounds depressive to me. I don't know if other people feel the same way, but I don't like saying goodbye. I don't know why. I just never did. Especially if it's goodbye. It just sounds permanent. I don't like it. So where am I going? And how much of this is real? Because this whole environment looks unrealistically evil. There's nothing here. Is it your parents? What the fuck was that? Something I'm gonna emerge weirdly out of the darkness? Eh, yeah, what? 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 I can't even make out what that's supposed to be. Is that some fat fucking mom or something? Fat bitch? A, a jester? Why is it so fucking gigantic? Why is it so fucking gigantic? Looks like the mom's hair. She's on a chair. Hmm. Well, well. I heard that you were looking for me. What took you so long? So... What are you doing here? Aggressive! You're the monster! I'm not afraid of you! What?! You should shiver to your bones. I've tried my best to give you everything. But you just keep on disappointing me. No matter what I do, how hard I try. I'm guessing it's this sort of representation of facing her fear, which is her parents. This more specifically than being her mother being drunk, so I'm not sure if the mother's supposed to be the more more blamed parent figure of she's like an angry, scary drunk, and she's trying to confront her. How hard I try, it's all about you. You think it's all about you, don't you? For one step into my shoes and think what I've been through, what I had to suffer, I did it all for you, and for what? Shame on you. What did I do? Isn't it obvious? Do I have to spell it out for you? 
I can't believe you. You honestly don't know what this is all about. This is ridiculous. Don't you see? You've ruined everything. You've forced my hand. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. I'm sick. Because of you. You really think I enjoy what I need to do? Okay, bitch one, you should have worn- you should have had whoever fucking got you pregnant wear a fucking condom. Two, birth control, or three. I don't know, blame yourself for fucking drinking nonstop. I don't fucking know, man. Get a job. Just to survive. I'm the victim here, huh, of course. I live in hell, day in, day out. If it weren't for you, I'd still be married. Explain why. I wouldn't be alone. I wouldn't feel miserable all the time. I wouldn't be sick. I wouldn't have to do this. You think I enjoy this? Um, yes. Speak your mind and don't mumble like that. This is your fault, not mine. You forced my hand. Oh, God. Just save it. I'm tired of your excuses. It's always someone else's fault. Ugh, the projection. Oh, God. You just can't take any responsibility. Well, what is it saying that sounds like a three-year-old? Come on. You just don't understand what it's like to live with this disease. I mean, I don't think being a gigantic bitch is a disease, but I didn't choose this. I've had enough of you. You're the worst thing that's happened to me. You stole everything from me. I've given you my life, and for what? To be left alone, old, broken, and sick. I never asked for this. Hmm. I don't know if getting angry would be a valid thing of handling an angry, stupid drunk. I don't know if being afraid would do be too, so I'll be defensive. I haven't done anything. I can't take any more. Why do you do this to me? You just take and take and take. Until there's nothing left to give. To tell the truth, I wish you were never born. If I could do it all over again, I would change it all. Good. You better cry, you see? You'll find the monster just by looking at the mirror. Oh, fuck off. It's not my fault. Of course, it's all you're doing. Of course. You should. What? <laughs> oh, that's ironic. But you weren't there, but I guess it all worked out for you. You finally got what you wanted. Didn't you? Disappointed. How could you do this? How dare you look at me like that? Well, go fuck yourself. Here I am, lying half dead on hospital bed. And you dare to look at me like that? You should be ashamed of yourself. No, I'm not gonna feel guilt tripped over you. You fucking subhuman piece of shit. Don't you understand? I had no choice but to take those pills. And you weren't there to stop me. Oh, right, okay. You have no idea what I've been through, and there you are, staring and judging me. I feel miserable enough already, I almost died. Good. Can't you see? This was my cry for help. But you don't care about that. No, it's all about you. Why do you make everything about yourself? This isn't about you, it's about me, who's her? Well, nothing. Not you. You don't care anyone. You care about anyone else but yourself. You know, it's the other way around. It's always been that way. Nonsense. I've given everything to you, and this is how you thank me. I'm your mother. I'm not some sort of monster. You're the most precious thing to me. <laughs> and I can prove it to you. Uh huh. I've got a box full of photos. It wasn't all bad. Hmm. Using an emotional plea, are you? Uh, I mean, having photos doesn't mean anything, but... Hmm... Hmm... 
defensive. I don't need to see that. Just look at them. Those were good times. We were all happy. You, me, your father, everything was perfect. You can't be serious. I don't recognize myself in any of those. I can tell that without even looking at them. You just don't get it. No, this is it for me. I can't take it anymore. Goodbye. Don't go, please. Hmm. I'm like putting this in a really heavy perspective of what I would do if I were in their, her shoes. Truly, I mean, if I were in these, in this position, I don't know what I would do, really. Yeah, that's a really difficult one. If she's at fault for everything and she's that obnoxious kind of bitch who blames everyone else but themselves, You can't think that there's no good side to the person, even as obnoxious as they are. They see it as a disease, they blame everyone else, but I'm quite positive, even as much as they are garbage, like scum of the world, that there'd be some kind of salvation if they had rehabilitation. But... I'll stay. I swear this is the last... Oh, you you got me. I I I, I fell for it, and and they got angry again after I took that sympathy. Fucking, you don't get the spine to leave. Yep, I'm done. They twist everything. Okay, there is no salvation for this cunt. Fuck off. So get angry again. Come back. Then angry. Just look at the photos. Holy shit! Jesus Christ! Flip flopping. If you just take a look at the photos, those are good times. No, well, you can suffer alone until you, uh, you know, you fucking, uh... Yeah. I, I gave her one fucking chance! I was like, okay, I'll stay for you, and then she snapped, I'm like... <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> nope. Oh, uh, yeah, that would be what I would do. I would be like, fine. Okay, never mind. Done. Just, just, just done. Ah, uh, so what's going on now? I'm um, also would be curious too if there's multiple or different endings or not. Ah, the photos on the ground. I'm not sure if that was her and the mother or on the bed with some. Oh, oh, it's done. Well, I had to look at the pictures, though. If there's more pictures. So I can see what kind of memories there would be. Being held by Dad as a baby. I want to know if there's multiple endings, I was trying to say. Because... Then I'd know if there's a different path I can take. Or a happier ending. Because that wasn't the best memory, but... I don't know, because the game's message... Wait, wait. Baby when born? Looks like some kind of Catholic... sort of ceremony, maybe. And the question then would be, why did the la dad leave? It's just they were together, but if then the tent, the guy that was the jester was the dad, because he was a silly guy, is, um... Is what he said when they're in the tent, if that was all truthful, that it's just like he wasn't ready for it and he left because he was just an, a father that abandoned the kid. But... In that instance, it would be just completely their fault for not, you know, wearing protection for one thing. Showing a picture of breastfeeding isn't going to, like, give me some kind of sympathy towards her. But... There wouldn't have been ha- like, if I had to get my thoughts to the situation, there's no multiple endings, and this is simply the ending. There was just never going to be a happy ending for this kind of family. Because... They didn't marry with good intentions. They married because of the obligation of having a child. They 
had a ch child that was unwanted and unexpected, got married, things were okay because they try to probably reassure themselves that they'll make it work. But since the child was completely unplanned, everything fell apart because it was unplanned and there's obviously there was no, not a solid foundation, not a loving relationship, and the dad unfortunately left because of that. Um, then just everything got drowned in alcohol to try to solve, or not solve, but you know, alcohol became the consumption in order to drown the mother's problems. And she couldn't, Jesus Christ, the sound. This is one loud ass song, I gotta turn that down, Jesus Christ. But yeah, then the mother started drowning herself in alcohol to try to pass the, uh, the pain of the ball. And then blame the child for it all because of her unexpectedly being pregnant with a mother, but of course we all know that's that's not the truth. The mother's fault for not wearing protection. So fuck you, uh, fictional mother character. I don't know, as for anyone else, I just hope uh, anyone that's viewing this, that you haven't had to deal with this, this in your childhood, and if you did, uh, tell me your story if you want to. Um, I'd be curious. I haven't had a, any problems with alcohol in my family. I knew my dad drank a little bit, and if I were to explain some, maybe some story of myself while, since this is the last episode, and why not? Um, I just remember, my mom didn't really drink much, and we had the traditional sort of classical, traditional, conservative household of, um, my dad worked, my mother would be a stay-at-home mom, uh, I have a brother and a sister and myself, so three children total. And my dad, of course, would drink a bit, but it's like, we didn't notice too much, because when he drank, he wasn't an angry drunk, he was just sort of a heavy social drinker, I'd label it, where he'd drink a lot, but you'd never really notice, or just that was from my perspective, I just thought he got different, but it wasn't a negative difference when he was drunk, and he smoked a lot, um, but, hmm, I also, I just remember the only thing is I wished he'd stopped smoking, I remember I was trying to plead to him that when he smoked, he got more easily agitated, and I just, the only, the one, my, the one of my last memories of my dad, I mean, he passed away, if it wasn't obvious, by, my t me, by me talking in past tense, is me telling him that he's happier without the nicotine, and when he stopped smoking, every time he'd try to stop smoking, then if he was off smoking for a few months, I told him, you look and sound and feel happier when you stop smoking, and you really are off of it. And I remember telling him to just stay off of cigarettes and stop smoking, because when he starts again, he starts getting more short-tempered. And I remember telling him to stop and stop for good. But he'd always then have that celebratory cigar randomly, and then he'd start smoking again. Um, as for alcohol, yeah, it's just he never really drank much, but I remember he was always sort of a guy who was always in pain. My dad had, like, uh, lower spinal cord issues. He had three discs in between his spinal column that were just completely smushed. They were destroyed. He had so his spine was grinding against his uh, just were grinding against each other because of the, the three discs being smashed. And so he was in pain constantly 24/7 and he could never get surgery for it. So he was like in pain like that for maybe like 10 15 years. And I don't know how painful, honestly, it would have been for him. Probably excruciating, and he would lived with it for so many years. And in his lifetime, he had three heart attacks, probably from his unhealthy eating. And, uh... Hmm. I don't know, that's, uh... I don't know, just the three spinal columns. I just remember he was either drunk, probably to help with the pain. He was on a heating pad all the time. He smoked a lot. And, uh... Usually he'd sometimes come home either being drunk or being high out of his mind, but not in a way that got, caused a negative uh, negative outlook from me. Or he came home with a new drug like hypermorphine to try to settle the pain. But the better out aspect that I see of it from after all of it over and I look at it in a future perspective is... I'm sort of glad my dad sort of passed away, and that might sound bad at first, but I put it in perspective that there's some things I wish my dad could have taught me, but... Mm, I feel like I'm opening up in a random perspective for others to hear my story. Um, I'm glad in a way my dad had passed away, not to make that sound weird or negative, but 
if being how excruciating and pain, I can't, I can't put, in, I don't understand, obviously, because I haven't personally experienced how painful having your spinal, your spine smashed and grinding together all the time. I knew he was in a lot of pain a lot. So I'm glad he sort of died only for the perspective that he doesn't have to suffer physical pain anymore. Like, I wouldn't want to feel burdened that he's just having to live and never get surgery and having to suffer and be in physical pain all the time. Him passing away in a way, I'm glad that he doesn't have to be in pain anymore. And that might sound weird or maybe really strange or saddening. Yeah, I mean, it's a mildly sad topic. I mean, I mean, he he passed away when I was 16, but I don't know. That's like it has nothing to do with alcoholism, but hey, I thought I felt like sharing. So, I mean, if you guys want to share an equally sad story, I didn't share all the details, but oh well, I mean, just, what, what, whatever, man. Just let me know if you have any complications, family problems, and if you want to share, if you want to ventilate, or alcoholism is an issue, let me know if you want. But uh, hey, you can share it here, and I'm all for helping or giving advice to suggestions if I can. But outside of that, I hope you enjoyed this series. And uh, let me see if there's actually no, there's no there's no achievements. Okay, yeah, and 6 a.m. Look at that. So, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you enjoyed my little story about my own family, my own past, and family. I said family twice probably now. And hope you enjoyed this series. If you did, please leave a like, comment, hit that subscribe button, make a main fluff subscriber. Until next time. <clears throat>